This is the second webinar on uh, small-scale projects. The first one is already available on the website of the program, mm -hmm. and the same uh, applies for this one. Once we are ready, we will publish it on the uh, program's website. Uh, what we are going to do uh, is first we will uh, uh, show you some slides with main features of the uh, small-scale projects, and then uh, in the second half of the webinar, we will... Uh, have a question and answer uh, session and mm -hmm. try to do our best to answer all of your uh, uh, questions regarding small scale project applications. So now we will uh, share the screen uh, uh, with you uh, with some slides. Uh, we hope it uh, will be uh, visible uh, and uh, start with some technicalities. Uh, as I said, the, the meeting is uh, uh, recorded. Uh, all the participants are muted and the cameras are switched off. Um, we don't use the chat functionality of the Zoom. Mm -hmm. Instead, uh, we will use uh, Slido uh, for uh, recording your questions and uh, we will go through uh, uh, all those questions in Slido in the second half of the webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, what you uh, can still do is when you see a question you wanted to ask, uh, you can vote uh, uh, for this question and then it ranks uh, higher in the list. So most yeah. probably it will mean that this question will be uh, earlier answered, hopefully. Exactly. Yes. Uh, so please scan the QR code or go to slider.com uh, and enter the password small, uh, small scale. Uh, and you are already in the question and answer session, so you can pose your questions during the webinar uh, mm -hmm. already. Uh, what is the aim uh, of uh, the uh, webinar? Actually, we want to equip you uh, as potential applicants uh, with the main features um, uh, of small scale projects. Uh, what to consider uh, during uh, the development of uh, such an application. Uh, but why exactly uh, small-scale project, projects, uh, Sarah? Can you tell us about this a bit more? Absolutely. It's a very good question. Uh, in fact, the small-scale project scheme that the Interregnor C program is uh, running in this program period of 2021 to 27 is brand new to the program. Uh, we have not done this before, and uh, our stakeholders, our monitoring committee, the delegations from our member states thought it would be really useful to have a new initiative in our program that would allow smaller projects that would run for a shorter amount of time, but be able to get up and running very quickly uh, to, to go forward. We have, as you may know, uh, some new regions and in fact a new country uh, joining our program this period. France has joined with three new regions. Uh, some new Flemish regions have joined and the entirety of the Netherlands is now in our program. So we want to onboard these new regions and the small scale project scheme is one way to get these, these uh, regions and the organizations in, in these regions on board in projects in a very quick and efficient manner. Another um, advantage or benefit uh, to having this for the program is to um, attract new partners. So not just the new regions, but it's always good, don't you think, to have organizations that haven't participated exactly. in our projects get in and bring a new perspective, bring some new experience to our projects. In addition, um, our program has four priorities and in those priorities, those thematic priorities, uh, we have some new specific objectives, some new areas of focus in the new program period that we would like to see organizations take up in projects. And the small scale project scheme is one another way to, to address that. And finally, um, really honing in on that last point, actually, to get new ideas off the ground, um, brand new ideas, brand new topics, brand new pilots and ways of, of, of demonstrating things. Um, we feel the small scale project could help to, to bring that to fruition. So those are the main reasons that the Interreg North Sea program has decided to start up the small scale scheme. Um, Thank you. Yeah, but could you tell us, Peter, 
what exactly is the scheme? How does it work? Like, what are the, the limitations or the boundaries? Yes, uh, uh, exactly. We have a, a, a framework to, mm. to do those ideas, uh, uh, get off the ground as quickly as possible. Yeah. Uh, and these are the main parameters, what you can see now on this slide. Um, small scale projects can last up to uh, 18 months, so one and a half years you have for implement uh, small scale projects. At least three, uh, maximum seven partners uh, would uh, uh, be in a partnership, mm -hmm. uh, but at least from three North Sea region country. That's a very uh, important uh, uh, message to keep the transnational angle of Absolutely. these smaller uh, projects. So at least three partners, maximum seven partners in a partnership. Uh, the total budget uh, is uh, limited uh, to 500,000 euros mm -hmm. in total. So the whole project, all the partners together will have uh, able to plan a budget up to 500,000 euros. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a rule of thumb. Uh, we don't have um, uh, a minimum uh, mm -hmm. budget, but we recommend uh, to plan your project in small scale project um, uh, uh, scheme uh, at least 200,000 euros. Uh, mm -hmm. enabling to finance real uh, uh, projects, actually exactly. project activities. Mm -hmm. uh, the last point on this slide uh, is just a little bit of teaser. I will <laughs> talk about uh, this later. Uh, we, will, we use in small scale projects only this budget uh, uh, planning option, mm -hmm. uh, which is the use of the 40% flat rate uh, based on uh, the staff cost uh, planned on a real cost basis. Mm -hmm. um, so these are the main uh, parameters, I mm -hmm. would say. Uh, and we have plenty of benefits uh, yes. to highlight for potential applicants. Uh, let's start with uh, some real benefits uh, for yep. the applicants, Sarah. Absolutely. Yes, so to kick this part of the presentation off, um, as Peter says, we have many uh, advantages to you as the project community to um, apply uh, in our small scale scheme. And the first is that it is, or it offers a simpler application, frankly. Um, the application for the small scale project resembles quite closely our uh, application for regular projects, um, the full application or second stage of our application process for full applications, for regular applications. However, um, there are some important differences. For example, um, the application form for small scale projects is a bit shorter. Um, and if you look at specifics, um, there is less information required on the individual partners in the project. Uh, there is less information required in the section on relevance and context of the, uh, of the project. And there is less information required in the area of project management. Um, however, that being said, um, a lot of the information is the same because we do require uh, information in order to make the decisions on whether we should fund the project. Um, in addition, and this is a quite important one, um, whereas in our regular projects, we have several work packages that we require information and activities and deliverables. In the small scale project, there is only one work package. So this makes it both um, easier and shorter for you to think about how am I going to structure this project? It must focus around one work package, um, but it also is very simple, I would say. And finally, as Peter has alluded to, um, it's easier to plan your budget because frankly, you have a limit. You know that you only have to give us your staff costs and then add 40% on top of that for all other costs. So I would say uh, that's quite a simple application form. Exactly. And uh, besides of uh, um, a simplified application form, still we are, uh, as you said, uh, uh, the program wants to select high quality projects. So yes. don't expect a one pager or two pager uh, application form. Yes. It is still a quite uh, a thorough application form mm -hmm. uh, helping you to plan your project activities mm -hmm. and budget and, and so on. Uh, but definitely it is simplified mm -hmm. in comparison to uh, the regular projects. Mm -hmm. uh, 
The other uh, benefit of uh, uh, small-scale project uh, applications is that uh, the selection process is uh, shorter. Correct. Yeah. Uh, as many of you would uh, uh, already know that the North Sea program selects the regular projects in two-step uh, selection procedure, uh, having an expression of interest and a full application round, which takes time, of course. In case of short, uh, uh, in case of small scale projects, uh, we use only one step selection mm -hmm. procedure. So the previously described application form is the only entry point yes. uh, for your uh, project uh, into the North Sea program. And based on this one single application form, uh, uh, the assessment will be done. Mm -hmm. Practically, it means that approximately four, four to six months will mm -hmm. last, uh, we will uh, uh, be the uh, approximately time mm -hmm. uh, for the selection uh, of the uh, projects from the submission uh, mm -hmm. deadline to the decision making uh, committee meeting actually. Yeah. So uh, we cannot say any uh, exact number of days, but approximately uh, four to six months it will take to uh, select a small scale project. That's great, yeah. Yes, and what else do we have to offer? Well, once you get selected, so once your project is approved, actually, uh, there are some benefits to you uh, running your project. Um, as I've already told you, uh, there is only one work package uh, in a small scale project. So while it does mean for very focused work, it also means you only have to worry about the activities that you've put in this work, one work package, which simplifies things. Um, in addition, because you can only have three to seven partners, um, it makes for easier coordination. Um, we've seen a couple of regular projects in our current program, in fact, with smaller partnerships, and it makes it just more flexible and versatile when you only have to um, communicate with and work with uh, a small number of partners. And finally, um, overall, because of the easier budget, because of the one work package, because of the fewer partners, uh, there is, in, in fact, less complexity to the whole uh, project, which makes it easier for you um, to, to administer and run the project. Exactly. What else do we see during the project that is a benefit to the projects? Uh, exactly uh, what you said. Uh, it is actually up to the projects, how do, you, do they overcomplicate still in this framework? <laughs> we see as a, as a, as a simpl simplified uh, uh, frame of implementing a, a project with one work package, as you said, but it's still up to you, actually, uh, mm -hmm. what is the com level of complexity of a project? Uh, what we can offer, mm -hmm. on the other hand, during the implementation, as we are already on the implementation uh, side of the selected projects, that is the easier reporting. Yeah. Uh, small scale projects need to report two times yeah. during their implementation. One midterm report, we call it at the moment, and one final report with a financial claim. Both uh, of them can financial claims as well, of course. Yeah. Uh, and the administration part uh, is much easier uh, from the validation of uh, uh, expenses or expenditures point mm -hmm. of view. We already mentioned several times, and I will go into details uh, soon, uh, that actually only the staff cost related documentation will be uh, mm -hmm. checked by the controllers, mm -hmm. because that's the only uh, cost category you have uh, planned and you will implement on a real cost basis. Mm -hmm. Now we are coming to the 40% flat rate uh, scheme uh, in the budget. And I will give you a short example, an easy one, I hope. Uh, <laughs> let's assume that one of the partners in a small scale project partnership uh, has 100,000 euros uh, staff cost mm -hmm. planned mm -hmm. uh, as an internal staff cost, 100,000 euros. The 40% uh, flat rate means, uh, in absolute numbers, 40,000 euros mm -hmm. uh, of this uh, staff cost. 40% uh, of this staff cost. This amount 
covers all the other cost categories of this partner, mm -hmm. right? So travel costs, office and administration, yeah. equipment, external expertise, uh, if the partner has those costs at all, or, or some of them, should be and must be covered uh, mm -hmm. by these 40,000 euros. So the total budget of this partner is 140,000 euros in total. This is in nutshell uh, how it is uh, being calculated. Uh, and the beauty of the flat rate is that, again, that no control uh, checks uh, will be done on the 40% part. So only the staff cost related documentation uh, is the one what the yeah, previous program we called FSC has checked. Mm -hmm. Uh, during the validation of uh, uh, expenses. That makes yeah. it pretty easy, yeah. I would say. I, I think it is pretty easy, though it needs very careful planning yeah. and very, uh, very hands-on implementation. Mm -hmm. So you claim your costs and the other costs based on uh, the staff cost of your, during the implementation. That's very important to, to, to remember. So uh, planning uh, the budget is a bit maybe uh, requires more time and, and uh, mm -hmm. thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, but once you are there, the implementation will be super easy. Yeah. Yes, and uh, we mentioned already several times that we have regular projects yes. as the main uh, implementation, uh, let's say, tool yeah. of the program. Uh, what are the similarities to those uh, regular projects, Sarah? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit more? Absolutely. Um, one of the main. Um, oh, sorry. One? Yeah. One of the main uh, similarities is that you can apply for a small scale project in all of our priorities. We have four priorities: uh, smart and robust economies, a, uh, a green transition, climate resilient North Sea region, and better governance. Um, in fact, in our first call, which closed at the beginning of March for small scale project applications, uh, we saw three applications and those were in priorities, um, green transition, climate resilient, North Sea region and better governance. Um, but we anticipate that the uptake will increase with calls two and probably three um, as people become more familiar with it. But that is all to say that you can apply in all of our priorities with a small scale project. Second, and this is quite important, um, we would like to see small scale projects take up new ideas. We've already said that, bring in new partners, bring in the new regions and so forth. Uh, but it's very important that when you plan your small scale project, when you're thinking about the, the concept, that you're thinking about a project running for 18 months that has something very solid to show at the end of that, so that we can see it as a standalone project. While we anticipate that people will test things out in these projects, um, the pilots and demonstrations, um, of course, on a reduced scale, um, we would and 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 they might take these up in future projects in our program or in even in other programs such as Horizon or Life. Uh, what is essential when you plan the project and run the project is that it is a project that runs from beginning to end and has some results to show for at the end. So that is also very similar to our regular projects. And finally, this goes without saying, I would say, but uh, we expect very high quality in our small scale projects. Again, this is a new initiative for us. So we don't know exactly what to expect um, when we see these projects running and finishing but that they should have a high quality application and be able to run for 18 months at a very high rate of quality. Uh, that, that's a given, I would say. Um, but there are also uh, some additional similarities to regular projects, and that's more on the structure and what you see when you are filling in the application. So as you may or may not be uh, aware, we have what we call in our program an intervention logic, which is the the, the, the clear logic of how your project is designed from the objective down to what you want to see in the results at the end of the project. Um, and this intervention logic is the same for both regular projects and the small scale projects. If you are not as familiar with our intervention logic and how it works, 
We uh, recommend that you look at our website uh, where we have done at least two webinars on this topic. Um, so you can get familiar by watching those videos. We also have a fact sheet on the intervention logic that explains very clearly uh, the definitions of deliverables and outputs and, and, and results. And we also had at our Get Ready event in Bruges in May, a presentation on this, and you can find the slides for that on our website as well. Um, so that um, being said, the indicator set that falls into the intervention logic is also the same. So we have the, the overall objective of the project, we have the activities that you create your work package around, and with those activities, there are some deliverables. And from the deliverables, we expect some outputs and results uh, to your project. So all very similar, depending, I mean, uh, no matter which type of project you're applying for. In addition, we would like to point out that the communications area of the projects is also similar, both in uh, the full, the, the regular projects on the small scale, uh, there are at least one or more communication objectives in the work package in small scale projects. You can, you can choose just one or you can have more than one. And target groups, the, the, the groups that you hope to target with your communications objectives are also required. Um, in addition, uh, there are communication activities that must be described in the work package that help to achieve that communications objective. So please keep in mind that when you fill in your application, you include activities on communications specifically. There will also be a general approach uh, question on communications in the small scale project application. So it's really important that you address this as well. And this is seen in both the small scale project application and the regular project application. Besides that, I, I, I think it might be worth just giving a little bit more detail about our outputs and results because um, there have been quite a few questions on this. Could you enlighten us a bit? Uh, yes, I try. Um, as you said, uh, there is the same indicator set uh, for regular projects and uh, small scale projects. What is this indicator set? Actually, that's the question here. Mm -hmm. And you can see the shortened version of the names of the indicators. Uh, on this slide, uh, on the left-hand side, uh, the output indicators, uh, and on the right-hand side, the result indicators and the relation in between the two. Uh, so this is the indicator set, actually. Uh, you can choose, uh, in addition to that, you can choose only two output indicators uh, from this list because the third one, organizations cooperating, is an easy one. It's a, this is the number of the partners in the partnership. So if you have four partners in the partnership, this output indicator automatically yeah. will be four as target value. Uh, and we hope you will uh, achieve this target at the end of the project implementation. Uh, the first two uh, are uh, pilot actions uh, uh, implemented, actually uh, solutions tested mm -hmm. uh, and, and created. Uh, the corresponding uh, result indicator is that how many of those solutions were taken up actually mm -hmm. because of this project. Mm -hmm. The second pair of indicators uh, is about strategies and action plans. Uh, so output uh, side, how many strategies, action plans the project created mm -hmm. on the field of expertise you're working on. And from these strategies, action plans, how many uh, uh, have been uh, taken up by different uh, organizations. So not the number of organizations taking up uh, the strategies action plans, but how many of those strategies action plans created by the project is the uh, uh, target mm -hmm. of this result indicator. The third one uh, on the result indicator uh, side is uh, actually um, telling us uh, the, the number of organizations with increased capacity based on uh, the project activities. Uh, how we define uh, increased capacity, that's an open-ended question, actually. Uh, there are several uh, uh, thoughts we, we have. Uh, some uh, uh, ways uh, an organization uh, has to increase the capacity, whether it is their uh, staff or their internal uh, 
uh, procedures or, or uh, whatever they gained uh, from this project, uh, then we can count those uh, organizations as, uh, on, as an organization with increased capacity. The only difference uh, in the relation uh, is here in this uh, uh, pair of indicators, uh, because in this case, uh, we would expect more organizations with increased capacity as a result of the, uh, of the project implementation than the partnership, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the number of partners in this partnership. Uh, so it's important to remember the relation between the target uh, values of, uh, of the output and result indicators. Uh, and we don't want to uh, give you an exact um, recommendation what is the what is a good target value, but uh, uh, it should be realistic, uh, and especially in small scale project, uh, we would uh, suggest to, uh, to to be as realistic as you can within those frames, as you remember, with this uh, five hundred thousand euros uh, budget. Uh, uh, shorter period of implementation and so on, be realistic. It is not a problem if you just, just create one strategy or two action plans, uh, it should be realistic. And it, uh, the, the main thing is that it, it should be uh, created by the project. So you won't uh, gain uh, more uh, scores or, or ranks mm -hmm. uh, uh, during the assessment if you put 100 strategies, 50 action plans, because there is a question mark whether it is really achievable uh, within those frames. Uh, the regular project is a different kind of uh, animal, let's put it like this, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, here it is, uh, it is more uh, uh, emphasized that uh, the target values should be very realistic. And that's all true. That's right. And I think um, it would be useful in this, in this instance to look at our fact sheet on the indicators and the intervention logic, because there it's very clearly laid out. What do we mean when we talk about pilot action? What do we mean by strategies and action plans and so forth? Uh, so we would encourage you to look at that. And that actually brings me to the next point. <laughs> um, for those of you who are actually thinking about implementing uh, or applying for a small scale project, um, here are some details on the time frame and how to how to go about it. Uh, first of all, as you know, we've finished our call our first call, but we're now planning call two. Call two opens the first of August, and it will close with the submission deadline of the fourteenth of November. So all applications that we accept in our program, uh, small scale project expression of interest or first stage, and then full application for the successful call one expressions of interest will be due by the 14th of November. We have plenty of guidance for you to uh, understand our rules, our procedures, our definitions. Uh, you can find those in what we call the fact sheets, which are on our website. Um, and if you go to our website, um, we are, to be very honest, in the, in, in the middle of creating a new website for the new program. But at the moment, our website has uh, a tag at the, on the right hand side, top new program. And under there, you can find resources and under resources are our fact sheets. So please make use of those. Um, next, we will have a guidance note as we do for all calls, which just lays out a little bit more detail about how to apply, what to keep in mind, what are some tips and tricks for a successful application and so forth. And this will be forthcoming after our, after our monitoring committee meeting next week. So stay tuned for this. It will also be on our website. Um, in addition, we will be offering online consultations with those of you interested in talking with us and with our national contact points. Um, and those will be starting up roughly second half of August, end of August, and running through roughly the end of October. Um, so please um, also watch the website for an announcement about this, and then you can book times or at least schedule uh, appointments with all of us to get some better advice. And finally, we have a video tutorial on our website. Uh, the link is below here, and you can get that from the slides that we will put up later um, on how to fill in the application form. As you can see, this uh, link is for our full application, but as we already said, 
the small scale project application is very similar. So it will help guide you step by step how to fill in your application. And I think that we have covered the main points. Yeah, yeah? exactly. Uh, at least this is what we, we plan for today <laughs> yes. uh, to, to, to present you. Mm -hmm. uh, but now uh, the floor is yours and uh, we are uh, having this, uh, uh, yes, approximately half an hour mm -hmm. uh, from this webinar uh, to answer your questions. Please uh, go to Slido and enter the password small uh, the sh uh, scale or uh, scan the QR code visible on this uh, uh, slide. And uh, we will be soon switching uh, screens uh, and uh, go to Slido uh, and answer the questions one yeah. by one. Mm Okay. Okay. Those are some good questions. Yeah. Let's start with. So, Peter. <laughs> Let's start <laughs> with the top one. Okay. <laughs> what's so what's, the, what's yeah. the average number of activities you expect in the work package? Uh, actually, uh, we don't have any uh, hard guidelines on that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is up to the project content, of course, uh, yes. how many uh, activities you plan. But what we see so far is that uh, an average uh, uh, number of activities is between uh, 5 to 10. It is not a problem if you have 12 mm. or 11, but uh, don't uh, uh, try to squeeze in uh, a small, and we are talking about small scale projects, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, don't squeeze in a regular project into a small scale project yeah. uh, having 25 activities. In this one work package, you have uh, in case of small scale projects. So let's say uh, between uh, five and 10 is, is uh, absolutely uh, uh, fine and meeting the uh, average numbers so far we have seen. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I would say again, your word from before, realistic. Yeah. It, it's almost more important when you're planning a small scale application that you think through how can we get done what we need within the 18 months. Um, so five to 10 would be quite realistic, I would say, depending on the scope of the activities. Um, but don't forget the communications activities. I think that's also important. That's important. Um, it, it's not only the pilot or the, the strategy that you want to plan and so on and so forth. It's also the communications activities that are going to, to support that, uh, those efforts. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. What kind of partners can submit an application? All kinds. Yeah. Um, we see a lot of public authorities, of course, in our projects, local level, regional level, also national level. Um, we see private partners, um, and we especially encourage small and medium-sized enterprises in our program. We see NGOs, we see research institutes and universities. Um, have I forgotten anything? I think uh, more or less. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the main point with a partnership uh, is that it's the right mix of partners. Are these the partners that can get done what you've said you want to do in your project application? Are they the ones that can exactly. meet the objective that you've set? Exactly. That's the main So point. the relevant partners yes. uh, to the topic uh, uh, you are addressing. Yeah. Uh, technically, uh, the lead partner is the one who is submitting the application. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, there is a lead partner principle. Uh, previously, it was a lead beneficiary principle mm -hmm. that the same actually, uh, who is uh, uh, coordinating the partnership and in the name of the partnership submits the application when it is ready mm -hmm. uh, for submission. That's the technical note Absolutely. Uh, to that. Yeah. Okay. And the next one. What can we do if during the project development, we recognize that we would need more partners or budget or time than the set limits? I think this goes back to what I said earlier, that it's really important, especially in the case of a small scale project to think through what do you want to accomplish in the small scale project? At the moment, because this is a new initiative, 
Uh, we have not discussed in the program whether small scale projects would be up for extensions. So I can't answer that question uh, right away, but I would say most important is that when you're thinking about doing this and you're trying to decide between small scale and regular project, you really think through what, are, what do I want to achieve? What is my objective? What do I want to see at the end of the project? And then decide, would it fit the small scale scheme or would it be better that I go for the regular project? Exactly. That's right. the point I wanted to uh, mention, that uh, if you if your project content budget time partner-wise uh, stretching the limits, uh, please consider the regular project scheme we have. Mm -hmm. uh, so exactly. you go to the expression of interest, uh, um, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, actually this two-step process in case of regular projects uh, gives you the um, advantage that you can test out mm -hmm. uh, whether uh, uh, your project idea fits to the exactly. program yeah. uh, in case of an expression of interest yeah. uh, submitted. So that's also an option. Yeah. Uh, and I would say um, we've had a very good success with our two-stage process. Um, we were happy with it in this, uh, in, the, in the program period of 2014 to 2020. Um, and the, the, all the member states agreed that we should carry it into the next period. And, and the expression of interest really is um, a way to see, does this project idea fit? Would this partnership work? Uh, what, does, what does the committee think of it? And you get good feedback on that um, to, to find out what could you do to, to enhance that for the full application of a regular project. So you, you should just think carefully, I would say, um, when trying to decide which of these two types of projects you want to apply for. Exactly. The next one is, uh, could you please give a brief overview of countries covered in the scheme of small scale projects? Yes, absolutely. Actually, it is the same yeah. as uh, we uh, do with the regular projects. So the seven countries covered by the North Sea program uh, uh, area, uh, is uh, from east to the west, uh, Sweden, uh, Denmark, Norway, Germany, uh, the Netherlands, uh, Belgium, and France. Yes. Uh, not the whole countries in each uh, uh, case, uh, except Denmark and the Netherlands. Uh, and the Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, there are some regions which mm -hmm. are which are uh, in the program. Uh, uh, eligible area, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but these seven countries uh, uh, covering the, the, the very same uh, uh, program area as the regular projects in case of small scale projects. Yes, and we have a map on our website so you can see more precisely what parts of the exactly. other five countries are covered. How to find partners. Does the program pro provide an online project ideas and partner search website? Yes, the answer is quite simple. Uh, actually, how to find partners and do we provide that are two different questions. Um, let's take the second one first because that's a relatively simple yes, no. We do at the moment on our current website have a project idea web uh, set of web pages because we divide it up by priority where you can submit a project idea and explain how far you are in developing that and the types of partners you're looking for. And then organizations that are interested in getting into projects can then look priority by priority for project ideas that interest them and perhaps write to the lead partner and say, hey, we're interested, we would like to join. Um, in the new website, we will have a bit more of a, an advanced uh, feature and that should be coming in September of this year. How to find partners. How would you recommend that, that uh, organizations find partners? Yeah, uh, actually, um, you know your field of expertise. So first of all, I think it is a simple mm -hmm. uh, uh, Google search even. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you are already, or most of you are already in contact with organizations dealing with the same uh, area of uh, uh, um, interest. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would go uh, with this first. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the safe move, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, but still, uh, it can it can uh, it can uh, establish a good uh, uh, partnership. Uh, I think here we can also offer the uh, help of the national contact points Absolutely. Uh, to contact your national contact point if you if you start with uh, with having partners. Uh, 
uh, and they uh, they will be uh, eager to help you yeah. actually to uh, to establish good uh, partnerships. And they're experts in their yes, countries, exactly. so they exactly. know the organizations that uh, are interested, are eager, are looking for, are are or are already involved in projects. Um, so we would highly encourage you to make use of that network. The national contacts can be found on our website as well. Uh, again, go to the new program tab at the top right of our website. And under there, you will be able to find our uh, co uh, contact points um, and their contact information. We did have a, an event uh, also, as we said in Bruges, uh, what we call our Get Ready event, which is the kickoff for each call that we, that we have. Um, and there, um, quite a few organizations were able to network and, and find one another. We do that uh, at the beginning or prior to each call. So we'll be doing that again for call three. Um, and you can always contact us and ask if we know of an organization that is interested in so-and-so, and we can then put out the feelers um, that way. Exactly. Uh, I cannot uh, underline more uh, the importance of finding the right partners. Yes. Yeah. If you have the right partnership, you will be uh, in a very good position, uh, easy implementation, easier implementation than if you uh, just find some partners because you wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the way you should go. Uh, so be uh, all partners very uh, enthusiastic, engaged in uh, the project, what you will uh, implement. That's very important thing. And then the commitment to the project is, uh, yeah, almost the uh, most important thing in uh, case of partnerships. It, and it just occurred to me, another way to, to look for partners would be to go to our current projects on the website look through uh, for projects that are doing at least maybe something similar or, or related to what you're interested in doing, and then look at the partnership for that project and see if there are some that, that might be open to it. You could just contact them. Um, that's what the website is for, is to make all of this information transparent. So, exactly. yeah. Next question is, is there a lower limit uh, to the number of countries involved in a small scale project? Yes. Yes. Uh, there is a, a um, limit of uh, three. So at least three uh, from those countries I just listed yeah. uh, uh, previously. Uh, the, the the partners at, uh, from one part <laughs> of one partnership it should come at least from three uh, of those countries uh, into the partnership. It can be more. Uh, Maximum seven, yeah. uh, actually, <laughs> yeah. uh, but at least three countries, uh, partners from at least three countries should be involved. And again, it really, it, it's about what the project is about and what you're trying to achieve again. So, so it, it has to fit. And generally, we encourage more than uh, the minimum, if it's possible, but minimum is three. That's correct. Remember, we are still implementing a transnational Program. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it is not a, a cross-border relation. It is a transnational angle. You should uh, uh, you should uh, bear in mind. Yeah, exactly. Are your small-scale projects coordinated with main project calls? Yes. At this moment, uh, we are running our calls for all three types of applications. So, as I said, call two will be open to the small-scale projects to the first stage or expression of interest, and to the second stage with what we call the full application for the successful expressions of interest from call one. So yes, it is the same. How can fresh graduates get involved? Can they be the lead partner? If you mean by fresh graduates, uh, an organization who, uh, which never ever participated in Interreg uh, project, uh, then yes, they can. We encourage new uh, organizations. We encourage, encourage the new organizations uh, to, uh, to, to take mm -hmm. on board. And in this case, uh, it is up to the partnership to decide who is the lead beneficiary, who, who is the lead yeah. partner, sorry. Yeah. So yes, uh, if, uh, if we uh, understand the question correctly, mm. uh, New organizations which 
uh, never been involved in Interreg uh, projects before, they can be lead partners. Yeah, they just have to pass, um, you know, the capacity check, the uh, the eligibility yes. check that shows that they are financially sound and they have the the management uh, resources to be able to run such a project. But being a small scale scheme, um, as we've already said, the administration is the the demands on administration are lower, so it makes it all a little bit simpler. If by fresh graduate, however, you meant actual. Individual. Graduates, yeah, yeah individuals, um, they are, they cannot be lead partners. The lead partner has to be an organization. Um, but we encourage um, organizations to to you know get the right people on board to work on the projects, and um, yeah, um, that's really the requirement. Yeah. Do all partners need to be new and or come from new regions? If not, how many? No, no. <laughs> Very simply, we 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 wanted the small scale scheme to encourage and to bring into the into the Interreg North Sea program new organizations, new regions, and so forth. But it is not a requirement um, that your project includes these new regions or new organizations. It's just um, we encourage it, and and we like to see um, a good mix. But it's not a requirement at all uh, that you include those new regions. Exactly. What's the average number of activities you expect? Uh, we, have, we have already yeah. answered this question. I yep. don't know what... Uh, Was that a uh, second time? How long will it take between submitting a small-scale project application and when the project can start? Uh, uh, one of the slides uh, contains this um, um, approximately um, approximate time uh, between the submission of a small-scale project and the selection mm -hmm. of a small-scale project. Uh, we said it is approximately four to six months. Yeah. Uh, if you calculate with this and you set your project start date, uh, approximately uh, in a six months time uh, from the submission, then you are most probably very close to the first uh, starting date possible. Correct. If it a bit, uh, uh, if you need more time to to, to set up the uh, the project, then of course you can add up a uh, couple of months. But mm -hmm. I would say uh, around this six months is uh, is the is the best uh, to start yeah. uh, 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 the project. And it is up to you to set what start date you'd like uh, yeah. for your project. So exactly counting from that eighteen months forward, that's that's the that's the project lifetime. Yes. Could you explain a little bit uh, uh, about the selection procedure? Yeah. Um, well, as you said, uh, we have um, an assessment of our project application. So what happens when the deadline passes is that your application goes through what we call the assessment procedure. And the assessments are done here in our Joint Secretariat office by project advisors like Peter, um, who look at the technical requirements of our, our projects and assess uh, the content of the application against those technical requirements. Then the, jo the Joint Secretariat makes a recommendation either to approve the project application or to reject it. When though the assessment procedure is complete for all project applications, those applications and assessments go to our monitoring committee and the monitoring committee delegations, which come from each member state, then also read the applications and the assessments and make a decision whether they would like to appro uh, approve or reject the project. When that process is finished, then there is a meeting where the member state delegations get together and discuss the assessments and the projects and decide as a final uh, decision uh, whether to approve or reject the applications. You can find more information about this in yet another one of our fact sheets <laughs> on the website. Uh, which explains that quite in detail. What about co-finance? Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, there is an easy answer to mm -hmm. this because it is uh, it doesn't differ from the regular project. So, uh, all uh, project budget is co-financed by uh, ERDF uh, funds. Uh, ERDF 
countries except mm. uh, Norway, sixty mm. percent uh, of the budget uh, is ERDF contribution. In case of Norwegian uh, partners, uh, this is a bit less, fifty uh, percent mm-hmm. from Norwegian uh, funds. So this is the setup: sixty percent for ERDF uh, uh, partners, fifty uh, percent for Norwegian partners. Uh, in uh, the other way around. If you are from an ERDF country, you have to provide 40% on contribution. So your own money is 40%. Uh, in case of Norwegian partners, it is 50% of uh, the budget. And that's both for regular and small-scale And small-scale projects. Project. Yeah. Yes. Do you? Do re- yeah, go ahead. Oh, oh it sorry. disappeared. <laughs> it was about... <laughs> Recommending whether you do a small scale project prior to before you, right? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, as far as I remember, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That was it. Exactly, and I I uh, I addressed this in in one of the the latter part of our presentation slides. Um, yeah, do you recommend participating in a small scale project first before developing? Um, as we said, it really depends on what you want to accomplish with the project. Um, it is absolutely feasible that you will run a small scale project and realize at the end of it, when you have your results that, wow, this really worked, but I really want to see it in a, in a wider uh, partnership, wide, a broader geography, longer scale um, project lifetime. And then you would go forward and apply for a regular project. But the, the thinking behind applying for a small scale project should always be is there something that I would like to do and, and, and explore and achieve within a short time frame and the parameters of the small scale project um, and therefore apply at, at that level of the small scale project, but at the end of which, if you see there's, there's something more that you would like to get done, then you would go for the regular project. It is what we are not looking for is, 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 a, is a small scale project where you're purely preparing to run a regular project right after that. That's why we explained the importance of the expression of interest, which is our first round of application for the regular project. You're testing whether the project idea fits with the program, whether the the committee would like to see that as a regular project, and then you go go to the second stage. Um, So there is a a tad uh, gray area here, but I, I hope that I've been clear about the difference between why you would go for the small scale project versus the regular project. I understood it, so <laughs> I, I hope uh, the good. majority That's of you will, uh, uh, also understand it. Yeah. I think that was the last question so far. Uh, okay. If uh, we still have five minutes, uh, so uh, maybe uh, we can. More? Okay, I... there's one more. Uh, Peter. Under 2.5, so we understand this is under specific objective 2.5, which is in our second priority on the green transition. You mentioned urban mobility. What is the definition of urban? We are on an island with four villages. Is that possible? We've had quite some discussions on that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, Urban, I guess, have uh, several definitions in uh, Mm. in the scientific uh, world yes. uh, or terms. Yeah. Uh, but we, if you are talking about exactly four villages on an island, mm. uh, I would argue it is not urban. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the program encourages urban-rural linkages. Correct. Uh, and uh, if you uh, uh, think... Uh, this way that uh, you want to connect these four villages and the island uh, uh, with some urban uh, initiatives, uh, maybe testing out something Mm -hmm. uh, the same way, I don't know, um, uh, e-bikes on those four villages for tourists and the same goes for um, 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 uh, a city uh, which which is doing the same, uh, piloting these things. Uh, then I can imagine uh, that those two can uh, be combined and be uh, part of a small-scale project even. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, 
more than that, I wouldn't uh, say about the definition of uber, urban. So it is, uh, uh, um, yeah, rather about urban or urban rural linkages. Yeah. Uh, if I understand correctly, the uh, the, uh, the question. I think questions like this are also um, best addressed by actually talking with us. Um, and perhaps sending us an idea and, and letting us have a dialogue about it. Because um, while there is, you know, the word urban is relatively clear, there is always some room for interpretation. And depending on what you want to accomplish in the project and what activities you would be including and, and the geography of the project, um, uh, we could advise you whether it would fit under the specific objective or not. Yeah, good question. <laughs> well, that's a very nice ending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Victor. <laughs> Thank you for being uh, here. Uh, and uh, we hope that we clarified a lot of things uh, in connection with uh, small scale projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really encourage you to, uh, to uh, start sooner than later, yes. uh, establish partnerships uh, with your project ideas because even though Sarah mentioned that we will launch the second call on 1st of August, mm -hmm. I would say before summer break, uh, it is a good idea in the last, in the next uh, couple of weeks to, to kind of uh, uh, sit together and, mm -hmm. and uh, do the first steps with your project ideas in small scale projects. And then it will be easier to continue after summer break. Uh, from 1st of August, you are able to, to Work on the application. Work on the application. Yep. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. So please go ahead. Uh, we are really eager to see yes. more and more small scale projects in the program. And let us know if, if after this webinar, if you have questions, let us know what they are and we'll be happy to answer them. Exactly. Uh, so. Use the national contact points uh, yes. on, in your countries uh, and the JS as well. So we are very uh, eager to hear your questions and uh, we can set up online meetings. We can meet in person if you come here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to be born. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, really, that's, uh, that's a very important message that we are open uh, for all of your uh, questions. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>